So remember when Republicans tried to claim, among other things, that the deadly January 6th insurrection was totally spontaneous? Trump supporters got caught up in the moment. Thanks to a brand-new piece of reporting in The New York Times breaking this afternoon, we now know that the criminal investigation into January 6th that DOJ is leading is now investigating whether Stop the Steal protests in Florida in 2018 were essentially a dry run, a rehearsal. If they had all the same toxic ingredients, lies about voter fraud, Donald Trump's incitement, and Trump's closest friends in Congress and allies in those extremist groups like the Proud Boys. From that brand new Times reporting, quote, the time was 2018, the setting was Southern Florida, and the election in question was for governor and a hotly contested race that would help determine control of the U.S. Senate. Now, four years later, the Justice Department is examining whether the tactics used then served as a model for the attack on the Capitol on January 6, 2021. Joining us now, the reporter whose byline is on that new reporting, Mike Schmidt, Claire, and Charlie are still with us. Mike, tell us what you and your colleagues are reporting. Um, look, in 2018, there was something, as you were saying, that sounded and appeared very similar to what happened on January 6th. We now know that this sprawling investigation that's looking at January 6th is looking at this. They're calling it Brooks Brothers 2.0, um, along the lines of the Brooks Brothers riot that happened during the 2000 election. And they are um, looking, been asking questions about Roger Stone's role in this and the role of a Stone associate named Jacob Engels. Um, and in the story, we also say that they're, they're looking at another individual who wrote a memo that was passed on to the head of the Proud Boys just right before the January 6th insurrection that laid out a plan for taking control of the Capitol. So sort of a, it gives you a sense that the January 6th investigation has cast a very large net, so large that it goes back to 2018. And when we looked at the 2018 event, it just, it had not only a lot of the hallmarks of, of 2020, but, you know, there was, you know, Rubio was out there uh, raising some of these questions about Democrats trying to steal the election. Trump was using his Twitter account to do that. Matt Gates showed up at the protest to rally the crowd. The crowd was chanting, stop the steal. So, you know, um, you know, I guess they say history, you know, you know, repeats okay. itself, but it really echoes. And these two events sort of echo each other. So we found some of that sound that you're talking about. Let me play that. We got some left-wing activists. We've got some Democrat D.C. lawyers. They're down here for one purpose, to steal this election. I fear, Martha, this may be the new strategy of the resistance. They're trying to steal elections that they can't win on Election Day. And all of a sudden, they're finding votes out of nowhere. And Rick Scott, who won by, you know, it was close, but he won by a comfortable margin. There's bad things have gone on in Broward County, really bad things. Although I hear, I don't know, you tell me, it's always the Democrats. It's always GPS fusion. It's always crooked stuff. In fact, it was the Proud Boys. Talk about the reappearance of the very same extremist group from 2018 and January 6th. Proud Boys were openly there. They were obviously openly there on on January 6th and obviously and openly there on the at the 2018 protest. Uh, Jacob Engels, this Stone associate who was identified with the the Proud Boys was one of the the ringleaders for this saying that he was heading down to Broward County to participate in these protests. Um, at one point we, we went back and we learned that during the 2018 protests, things got so tense that um, the crowd was pushing people up against the doors of this building where the votes were being counted. The 2018 incident did not lead to the violence that happened on January 6th, uh, but it certainly showed a willingness of this group of people uh, to really push the, the limits and the democratic norms, obviously throwing the democratic norms out the window, to, to go to these extraordinary measures that show up two years later on the steps of the Capitol. Charlie, in Florida, two years ago, in 2018, the Republicans prevailed. I mean, we would never know mm -hmm. if the violence would have also been on the menu in 2018 if the outcome had been different. What's amazing is that all the... I mean, yeah. you read 
Did you read Mike's story with your jaw on the table? Roger Stone was there. The Proud Boys were there. Matt mm -hmm. Gates was there. Donald Trump was inciting it. They will keep doing the same thing over and over again. They're not the variable. We are. What did you make when you read this story? Well, you know, it, it, it's again a reminder that so much of what we're discussing, you know, has been a long time coming. I mean, remember when, you know, Donald Trump, even after he won in 2016, was talking about, you know, millions of illegal votes. Uh, that had been cast. So, you know, and uh, going back to what Ben Collins said in a previous uh, a, a segment, we are not at seeing the culmination of these trends. We are in the middle, maybe the early stages of what is going to be a new normal here. January 6th was, in many ways, a dry run for what could happen in the, f the future. And many of these players have been signaling what they're prepared to do for a very, very long time. So I think people need to buckle up. If you thought that January 6th was bad, Wait until you see what is coming in 2024, 2025. That's just so harrowing. Um, Mike Schmidt, one last question for you. Are they investigating participants in 2018, or are they looking at participants in January 6, 2021, and asking questions about this event as well? Or is that not clear? Uh, it's not clear. We know that they have cast a wide net in the January 6th investigation. We know that they're asking about Brooks Brothers 2.0, as, as it has been described, that they're asking about someone like Jacob Engels, and they're trying to figure out whether these were building blocks that built on top of each other towards towards that, it, as it, like a dry run, as you were saying. So um, there's a lot that we can't see into this investigation, yeah. But certainly a clue, and it would be the type of fact that even if it was beyond the statute of limitations, that if you were to be making a case against someone to show a pattern of behavior, my guess would be something that prosecutors would certainly want to have and certainly would want to know.